is Tracy and today I'm going to be doing a video talking about strengthening your sideboard in modern and I've done a lot of sideboard videos actually um, but I find that there's so much information to talk about that I feel like trying to stuff it all in one video would just be too much but I'll list in the description bar below um, some other videos on my sidebar side sidebar sideboard if you want to check them out this one today I'm going to be focusing on a couple of just general tips about how to like strengthen your sideboard how to construct your sideboard because I find that a lot of times like I get comments from people who are like oh my gosh like this video on the sideboard was so helpful um, I was struggling with it because it's a very difficult thing I find to always construct but these are some tips that I've compiled that I hope you find helpful the first thing is is you know, you'll know what kind of strategy you're running if you're running like an aggressive strategy or like a more control strategy. And that's going to determine what kind of cards are in your sideboard. And what do I mean by this? If you're, say, running an aggressive strategy and where you want to run like a lot of creatures, I'd suggest a card like Fulminator Mage because, and I'm, I'm not talking about just this card, I'm talking about cards like this that are creatures. If you're running an aggressive strategy, you want to run creatures because a lot of times what will happen is you may want to take out cards that are creatures because they're not good in the matchup. But a card like Fulminator Mage is a control card. It stops your opponent, but it's also a creature at the end of the day, which is really good. So you'd instead, if you're running a aggressive strategy, you want to run creatures versus spells. But if you're running a control strategy where you want to have instants and sorceries because you want to have, you want this to snap them back with something like Snapcaster Mage or bring them back with other means, um, you may want to run a card like Dispel, for example. You may want to run like instants and sorceries if you're running a control deck. This seems kind of obvious, but a lot of people like struggle with this in their sideboard. And I'm not saying every single card, if you're running an aggressive strategy, I'm not saying every single card should be a creature. I'm just saying that a percentage of them may want to be, probably do want to be creatures because that goes more along with your strategy. Because at the end of the day, Fulminator Mage does its thing, but you also got a 2 2, which can potentially kill your opponent. Versus Dispel it just goes to the graveyard, but it synergizes really well with Snapcaster Mage. There you go. Number two. Um, you want to find cards that fit in a variety of decks versus cards that are not super specific. Now, I'm not saying that every card has to be like general, but I'm saying the majority of cards should be pretty general and fit a majority of against decks. So let's talk about the card Smelt. This card's pretty basic, I would say. It does the thing, it does the one thing pretty damn well, it's one mana, whatever. You go on your merry way. However, Smelt, maybe try a card like Destructive Revelry. And why I'd recommend Destructive Revelry is, first off, yes, it's one more mana, but it's also an instant speed to destroy target artifact or enchantment. It does more things. You're going to hit a lot of stuff, versus Smelt is only good against decks that run artifacts, such as Affinity. Okay, let's talk about a card maybe like that you'd want to run that's maybe more general than both of those things, like Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle is like one of my top sideboard cards of like all time, and I basically put it in like every sideboard ever because I love it and it hits a ton of different things. You know, you hit Planeswalkers with this, it's really good. Um, just it just stops a lot of different things. It's really great. Namely, I'm namely thinking of Planeswalkers because some people just shut me out of the game when I'm playing like Elspeth Sons Champion and they're like Pithing Needle, and I'm like that's really good. Or a card like Rest in Peace. Now, Rest in Peace is really good because it's an enchantment. It stays on the board permanently until it's removed. Um, and it's a card that hits a variety of decks because it hits a ton of different decks. Like Rest in Peace is great against like every blue deck like ever because you're stopping their like things. So yes, it's only hitting graveyards, but it's hitting like a ton of different decks where they want to interact with their graveyard. It also hits like um, the deck that I always forget the name of that like... Um, Living End, where like you do the things with the graveyard with the board. Yeah, it hits that deck. It hoses that deck, by the way. Um, so basically, I think this point is really, is be versatile with your sideboard. You want to have cards that hit a variety of different decks. Here's the thing. Number three. I say this all the time. I actually pulled in a quote, which is, you can't step in the same river twice. Now, a lot of people think this is from Pocahontas. Actually, originally it was by this philosopher named Heraclides, Heraclitus, Heraclides, whatever. Philosopher originally said that, not Pocahontas. They just stole that line and named it their own. Um, but yeah, so change up your deck. So with that quote, you can't step in the same river twice. Your sideboard should look different all the time. And I say this all the time because it's important. Here's the deal is if you run the same sideboard all the time, people are going to expect what you're running, especially if you're going to like an FNM setting. So change your sideboard up. Also too, your sideboard changes with your meta. I'm not going to go into this further. I've said this a bunch of times. Number four. Um, I'm notorious for this. I'm so known for this. I don't usually do three or four of on my sideboard. It's pretty rare when I do that. 
try one ofs instead and see how your sideboard plays out. And some people get like super defensive about this and I'm like, you know something about why this is good? Is it makes your sideboard less predictable. Because if you're someone who runs a sideboard, so you have 15 cards and then you run say like four of four cards and three of one card, right? Does that math work out? You guys know what I mean. But with, the, with that math and how it works out. So like the most of like all you can run of cards is your opponent that knows, okay, they're definitely sideboarding this in, you know? But if you run like a one of of a card, they're not gonna expect it because they're just like, I totally didn't see that card coming. Yeah, really, really good. Definitely try it. Definitely try like running more things that do like a variety of things. Now there's some cards that like, you may just need to run multiple of, but if you're kind of like, hey, I like this card, but I also like this card, try like a one of of both of them and see how it plays out. I do this all the time. It's like how I build my sideboards. Helps me out a lot. Number five, this sounds a lot easier than it is, but figure out what cards are like really bad against your opponent and um, in certain matchups. So like example, if you're playing against Burn and you're playing Jund, you side out Dark Confidant. Duh. I hope this should be obvious. One, because it dies to Lightning Bolt. And two, your opponent just may keep it around because you'll end up killing yourself. Now, some people may disagree. I personally just hate Dark Confident, and I've talked about that a lot. I just don't like this card, and I will never run it ever in anything. Even in, like, my Jund mid-range build, which I'm going to do a deck deck on, I'm not running Dark Confident because I just don't like it. People are like, oh, oh, the, um, the card advantage, blah, blah, blah. And then Jund just kills himself with lives anyway. So, um, anyways, that was my rant on Jund for the day. But... Yeah, simple little things. Or like Thoughtseize. If you're playing against Burn, Thoughtseize is like really bad. My parents were making very obscure noises and decided when I was filming this video that they needed to do all the stuff, apparently. Don't they know I'm filming? Um, okay, this is like the same point as this. Figure out what cards are like good in certain matchups. They may not be great, but like sometimes your sideboard isn't gonna be great against people. Sometimes you're not gonna have like a million answers, and that's okay. So find out what cards are good. So like, for example, if you're playing against Affinity, a card like Spellskite's pretty good. I'm not saying it's amazing, but it's pretty good. First off, it blocks Edge Champion, which Edge Champion's really damn hard to deal with, to begin with. So Spellskite's really good for that. Also, it stops Cranial Plating and a bunch of other things. But more importantly, it just blocks their Edge Champion. Really, really good. Sweet. Number seven. Okay, this is a really important concept, and I'm not going to touch on it too much in this video because I want to do a whole video on it. Really important concept. Does your sideboard progress your board or stop your opponent? Or does it do both? So let's talk about it. A card like All Is Dust. All Is Dust basically just doesn't help you at all, except for stopping your opponent. So a card like All Is Dust stops your opponent dead in their tracks. It does that thing. Whatever. It doesn't really, like, help you. It helps you because it stops your opponent, if that makes sense. But let's talk about a card like Restoration Angel, or even Fulminator Mage is actually a really good example. What I really like about a card like Fulminator Mage is it does its thing, it stops your opponent, but it also progresses your board because you're left with the 2-2. A card like Restoration Angel, I love this card also too, so I'm a little biased, but Restoration Angel does a couple of different things. First off, it blinks something. So you pretty much stop a card from removal which is awesome. And second off, you're left with a 3-4 flyer for 4 mana, which is really, really good. It's also got flash too. This card just does like everything. I love it. So basically, um, you want cards that a lot of times progress your board, but also stop your opponent. So like, it, if you're running like Restoration Angel, for example, you're like temporarily stopping your opponent because you're like casting, you're causing their removal spell, their path to exile or whatever to be pretty useless because you've removed that creature and then you brought it right back. And you're left with a 3-4. So basically, this is a really important concept that, yes, are you going to have cards that just straight up stop your opponent? A card like Choke straight up stops your opponent. It probably doesn't help you. It probably doesn't help you progress your board, but it completely stops them dead in their tracks. It's all about finding a balance. It's all about like finding out a sideboard because if you have cards, sideboard cards that are just no, that don't help your board, you're taking out like win conditions and replacing them with cards that stop your opponent, which sometimes, again, you need to. But if all 15 of your cards just say no to your opponent, where is your strategy going? Are you, you're not helping your strategy. You're just stopping them from doing their thing. Like I said, I want to do a video on this because I think it's a really important concept that a lot of people miss. So, yeah, guys, 
that was it. That was it for talking about things, pretty simple things I would say to like strengthen your sideboard. It's very difficult and none of these are going to like happen overnight. Sideboards are like incredibly difficult things to manipulate and to like build, but the more you do it, the better at it you're going to get. And yeah, that's it. Talk to you guys later.